Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to create a really simple diagram uh, utilizing Rhino as a start, and then we're going to take that, uh, render that out in V-Ray, and then combine uh, some line work and basic geometry in Illustrator. Uh, so this is going to cover three different softwares. Uh, so uh, I've been working with one of my classes here, so I'm going to go ahead and open that up. So what we did here is, as an icebreaker exercise, we developed a, a basically a paper folding exercise that's going to take us into and um, create this paper wrapping object that's going to go through and uh, wrap around celebrating this cup. Um, and so we're basically going to be diagramming the methodology for making it. We're going to start with a piece of paper. We're going to cut out, in this case, laser cut out that piece of paper, take that piece of paper, perform a, a folding operation, uh, and wrap that around the cup. The object that we have here. Okay, so uh, I've, I'm not going to get into the, the basics here of how we're going to construct that uh, all this geometry. That's another demonstration, but essentially we have this stuff that we're ready to render. Uh, I've picked an isometric view uh, that we're going to take here, and I'm going to go ahead and just show you how to put that all together. So I'm going to take this stuff, go ahead and just hide that. Uh, so we have the, the information here laid out, and I've taken this into an isometric view by using our rotate tool. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, reorient this so we can, can start from scratch. And I've created some curves here, some instructions. All right. So the Rhino command here that's really useful is we can take this information and type make 2D. And it'll give us a bunch of options here. I basically just want to see what's visible, so I'm going to unpack any of the hidden information and all that. So it should look something like this when I get done. Hit OK. And I'll hop out of my right view, and you'll see that that line work is now gone and appeared in our top view. Uh, and so each one of these curves, edge curves, is actually generated in here, and it has, if we go into perspective, no thickness. So this is really nice and, and handy when we're actually trying to create line work and line diagrams. Okay, uh, the second thing we need to do is uh, be nice for us to set up uh, some kind of rendering engine for this. And so we're going to be utilizing V-Ray to do that. And so what we have here is, uh, here's the V-Ray menu. Uh, we've set our current rendering engine here to V-Ray. Uh, so I'm going to go in here and click under the, the output tab here. Sorry, the options tab. Uh, under file, uh, V-Ray is really nice. It's, it has a really simple setup here where we can load a basic lighting system. So we're going to go to load. And this is going to give us a, a bunch of really nice options here. I'm just going to very quickly create a medium uh, setup here. Uh, I'm not applying any kind of materials to this, not doing anything special. Uh, you'll note that I have a ground plane in here that I block. I can unlock that, I'm typing unlock. Uh, this is sitting below all my geometry, so I'm going to get some nice soft shadows in here. Uh, and then all the geometry is sort of aligned in such a way that you can see it. I've set up all the spacing, though, so there's not uh, any overlap between any of those geometries. All right, and so I'll just go ahead and select this again and re-lock that. And this is, uh, the output here is set to the viewport at this point. I can override that if I so choose. Um, but for what I'm doing, I don't really need it. I'm going to hold shift, right click, uh, and I'm just going to hit render. And this looks a little washed out, but that's actually okay. I'm going to come over here and turn off this uh, little advertisement for V-Ray and the rendering. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and hit save. I'm just going to save this as a JPEG on the desktop here. And we'll call it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get that saved. All right. So that's the image here. And then I'm going to go in here. And then the second thing we need to do is we need to get this line work um, out so we into the format that we can take it to Illustrator. And so I'm going to go ahead and export this. I'm going to save that as image line work. All right. And then under the drop down menu, we can save the file format or Adobe Illustrator, since that's the, the software we're going to be uh, combining these, this stuff into. I'm going to go ahead and get save. If you've been working in a scale, that's OK. Um, it doesn't really matter. We're going to be scaling this once we get it in the software anyways. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just um, preserve that. All right. I'm going to go ahead and minimize that and pull up my Adobe Illustrator. Now, and I'm just going to hit Control O to open up the file that I just created. And I save that as you see that I've done some awesome file management on my desktop. So go ahead and open this up. 
Now, when you export something out of Illustrator, um, it uses this point as the origin for all of that. Um, and so everything is going to be originating from all that. Um, so in some cases, this is going to fall out of the editing board out here. So it'll end up in all that. If you if that happens, not to worry. Uh, you just hit Control A to select all, Control X to cut it, and Control V to paste it, and that'll automatically paste it in the center of your working area. Okay, so we have our line work in here. Uh, so this is the first step. The second step is we need to open up our image that we rendered out. So I'll go again, Control O, and uh, all the. So go ahead and open that guy up. So what I want to do here is I'm just going to take this Control C to copy it. I'll minimize that out. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste that in place. I'll zoom out. Here. Now I'm going to, obviously these are not aligned, but I'm going to align them by uh, basically scaling them. And I'm going to click, and if I hold Shift, it'll do this. If I hold Alt, I can actually scale around uh, the middle boundaries here. So I'll zoom in once I've done that a little bit. And it looks like I'm pretty close. I'll just hold Alt again. like that. And I'm in the ballpark here. I'm just going to take this and if I hit control 2, I can lock that so I can't edit the image. Now the image is locked in place. So now I can just focus on what I'm doing with the illustration or the line work, sorry. Shift here. Well, that's a lot. It's starting to get aligned more or less. All right, and so that looks that's looking pretty nice here. And now we can start to edit some of the things. And this is a, the real strength of Illustrator. We can start to look at line weights and start to drop this stuff down to give this a, a really nice aesthetic. So we can really start to look at this. I'm going to, since this is a, an operation here, I'm going to go ahead and hop into my toolbars to edit the line work. I'll grab here. All right. And then we can, I'm going to turn that into a dashed line, for instance. I'll, and then I'm also going to change the color here. So that renders out nicely. So you can start to see how this is starting to age for the hand tool. I'll just pan over, zoom in. It's a really, really, really simple diagram. Uh, just very, very quickly, we can take that information and overlay it. Uh, this becomes really nice when we start to get into some of this other stuff. We want to start to make these edges perhaps have uh, a little bit more heaviness. We can start to beat that guy up, really create some nice assembly diagrams here. All right, so we can start to highlight those edges. So we can really start to get into the, um, you guys can start to customize this as you go through it. Um, and you can see there's going to be some other tools and stuff that we really want to get into the customization of this. redo that. All right, so then this is essentially uh, ready to be saved. So we'll just go ahead and go ahead and save as. Uh, save it as the image diagram. And if you notice this, the save as, we're not, we won't actually want this to be an image. You can save it as an Illustrator file if you want to take this, uh, plug it into an InDesign document where you're going to be printing it. Uh, that'll maintain your line weights very nicely. Uh, we can go ahead and hit save. We're just going to want to save this as a other guy here. It's going to give us these options. Hit OK. Uh, but we ultimately want to be able to produce this as an image. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Export. We do that. And it immediately pops up a bunch of other new options here. Uh, so we're doing this for the web. We can do a PNG. We're doing this for something for print. We can do save it as a JPEG. Go ahead and save that out. Um, make, make sure you pay attention to your color format, color schemes, high resolution, hit OK. And that's it. Now we can go ahead and if we pop up here, put on my desktop, organized here, we can pull up that image. And you can see it's uh, a little bit washed out and a little bit pixelated. Uh, if we were to hop into Rhino, you could start to adjust the resolution of your rendering so it's beyond what your screen resolution is, um, and you can control that. Um, obviously, the line work, because it's vector work, you can scale it or anything, you're not going to lose any resolution. But uh, that's the basic concept for getting this set up.